Hi, it's Handy Val. I've replaced my old coolant reservoir with a new Mercedes reservoir. I'll highlight the steps I took for this procedure, including how to drain, replace the reservoir, and then refill it. There are a few important tips and pain points that I'll share along the way, including the type of coolant. My tank clearly needed to be replaced. As you can see, it started to leak a few drops from where the metal neck comes together with the plastic body. It's a common problem as these original reservoirs age. This one is clearly original and started leaking only about six months ago. And I temporarily experimented with an adhesive glue, but without success. A drop or two may sound harmless, but it's critical that the coolant system be under pressure. And if I'm losing a few drops, then it's not under pressure. A system under pressure ensures a higher boiling point for the coolant and provides more coolant protection to the engine and ensures that the head gasket does not prematurely fail. So that's why I'm replacing mine, or that's why I replaced mine. Not because I'm losing a couple of drops, but because I'm worried that the system isn't holding maximum pressure for effectiveness. It's a pretty simple swap if things go well. And I'll repeat, if things go well. But we know that they don't always go well, and I encountered one big problem that I will share. Before I get there, this procedure to remove and replace should be the same for all R129s made from 1990 to 2001, including the 300, the 320, the 500, and the 600. It's the same tank for all R129s, and the location is the same for all vehicles. Before removing it, we need to drain as much coolant as possible. This is the hardest part of the job, and the dirtiest. Now, I don't want to disconnect these hoses from here because they will make a mess into the engine bay compartment, possibly even contaminate your belts, which would then need to be replaced, so you need to be careful. And I wanted to do this by draining the radiator from the radiator plug, and I'll show, show you this in a second, and using this type of hose and connect it to the drain nipple of the radiator, and then from this other side, dump it into a container. Okay, right there, now you're seeing the reflection from the mirror there that I've got at the bottom, and I've got that orange stick there. And you can see the nipple to the right of the orange stick, and then you could see a little bit of orange, which would have been the radiator screw. And I say which would have been the radiator screw because... Now, unfortunately for me, and something you'll need to be aware of if you attempt to do this, is that these radiator plugs are prone to breaking off and snapping off. And what happened to me as I was turning it, well, I wasn't really turning anything. I just snapped. It just snapped. So worst case would have been if the screw would have turned a bit and then snapped off. If that would have happened, I would have lost coolant through the nipple and would likely need to replace the whole radiator just to remove that piece of stuck plastic in there. So I soon realized that nothing was leaking from the nipple or from the drain plug screw. And that effectively, again, just to repeat here, would have meant that a large portion of this screw is still embedded in the radiator and I didn't actually turn it's like this is like turning a faucet you turn a faucet and then the coolant comes out from a nipple but I just broke kind of like the handle and the rest of the screw is still embedded into the radiator and it wasn't leaking so the tip here is that you need to be extra careful when removing this these drain plug screws and don't force it if it's not coming undone then do what I'm gonna do next so to drain it, I removed this hose from the radiator all the way down there. So that's where I unplugged it. There's a, there's a clamp right over there. Make sure you've got a container underneath, and I'll get how you do that. I lost about six and a half liters, or 6.5 quarts, which is about half of all the coolant 
in the system. So this is a 92300SL and it has about 11.5 liters or about 12 quarts of coolant throughout. If you have the 500, it uses 15.5 liters or, six, or about 16.5 quarts of coolant. So what you have to do, you have to loosen the clamp with a very small socket set. I used this socket set. Now there's also a Phillips screw there, but it's best to use a socket. Now this is a seven millimeter for this car, maybe a little bit different depending on the years. And once it's loosened, loosened enough, all you had to do is then pull it out and coolant will come gushing. But before it comes gushing, move on to your tip, to the next tip here. What you'll need to do is go underneath the car to try to remove the plastic tray. Now you don't have to remove the entire plastic tray. All you need to remove the two front screws and you can sort of see one there. Okay, and there's gonna be another one down by there. You don't have to get to the ones that are all the way back there. And I'm just illustrating here if this were if you know had removed the two screws I'm not doing that right now if you had to remove those two screws the plastic thing would just kind of come down you kind of push it down and it'll kind of stay like that and then what you need to do is grab a Tupperware container that's gonna I'm gonna say it's got to be at least be able to hold eight liters of fluid and you place it right underneath where that hose is before you pull that yank that hose out and that will guarantee that it's going to fall right into your Tupperware container. It goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. This needs to be done with a cold engine, and you need to be wearing gloves and protective eyewear to protect yourself and any helpers, as you likely will have squirts of that coolant as it kind of maybe hits that Tupperware container or if it goes a little bit off. And coolant, remember, is extremely toxic to both humans and animals, including pets. So keep pets away as you do this job. Now you need to remove and loosen all of the hoses, right? So this is one hose. Again, it's, all, it's still always that um, seven millimeter hose. Kind of just yanks it out, loosen it. There's the uh, there's a hose down here. You can sort of see that over there. You're gonna loosen that quite easily, okay? There's one over here as well. This one just quickly just comes, yanks itself down. I mean, it's gonna be pretty self-explanatory. And you also have the coolant level sensor there. You're gonna to need to unplug, to put your fingers on it, and then just pull it out. Also need to remove this casing right here because there's, gonna, there's, there's two bolts holding this thing down. So this is quite easy. This is actually, actually is by hand. There's a, there's a plastic bolt over there. It's just, a, it's just gonna be a 10 millimeter. Okay, I kinda of just do this by hand. Okay, you need to connect to remove parts of this. I'm gonna take the whole thing off, but just just these screws on this side, this is where the number of the relays are held. And then again, you're not taking the whole thing out. You can sort of tell that it all starts to kind of come, come undone. Okay, a little bit of little bit of this, and then we take that out of the way, and then this whole thing kind of just comes right out. That's going to expose two, I believe those are two 10 millimeter bolts, and that's it. Once you remove those with the same type of socket set, kind of a small socket set, or whatever is easiest for you, then everything will effectively be out. So here's the old one. So once you've disconnected this hose, that hose, this hose, I mean, we kind of gone over this. You don't necessarily need to disconnect that. Uh, you've got the, uh, you know, the two bolts disconnected. You're going to notice it's got this little kind of intrusion over here that is, there's a rubber grommet kind of holding it in place. And all you need to do is kind of get both hands on it, you know, and not, you don't need a lot of force here. You just yank it straight up, right? Straight up, and you're going to remove, and this whole thing will just come out. At that point, you know, <laughs> let's just, just to show you just the condition of this one was awfully bad. So I'm kind of glad it started leaking. Uh, it gave me an opportunity to really kind of, you know, get rid of it and replace it with a brand new one. So at that point, you've got the old one out. You're just going to place the new one in. Now you're going to push it in because you remember that, that grommet? You've got to push it in. And then all you're going to do is reconnect all the hoses again. Okay? You're going to put the, the screws in back there nice and easy. You're going to put this plastic thing back. Your job is effectively 
you know, almost complete. Mercedes recommends replacing your coolant every three years for all, and for all R129s, Mercedes recommends their blue coolant, which I and also many others believe is the exact same as Valvoline's Xerox G48, which is also blue. I'm also using distilled water, as you can see. I will need to mix the coolant, as that is concentrate. And I mix, need to mix the coolant with a 50-50 mix that will give the desired protection for most climates. Interesting enough, Mercedes says that you can use fresh tap water to mix with this coolant. This just means that the chemicals in here are super strong against any calcium buildup. Nonetheless, I'm still using distilled water as it's so cheap anyway. Don't, don't risk it. Now, I already had the blue stuff in here, you know, kind of like this bluish uh, aqua type color. So I just replaced mine with the blue stuff. But if you have any other color, I suggest you keep the same color. So if you had green, fill it up with green. If you had the Valvoline G05, which is another common one of maybe 10 years ago, this is the yellow kind, then you top it up with the same kind, same yellow. Now, if you want to convert to blue, and I suggest you do, then you need to have a coolant flush. And that's likely going to be another video. I won't get into that at this at this point. It's not as simple as just filling it up to the point where the white meets the black here. There's also a plastic marker in the reservoir to help guide you. Let's have a look there so you can see it. You're also going to notice is that you know the coolant cap is is different. You can sort of see it in there. Maybe you have a look. You can kind of see the uh, the marker there, and you want to be at the top of that marker. Okay, maybe come, come in a little bit closer. Yeah, go straight in. Yeah, you can sort of see it, that marker there. You want to be at the tip of that marker, which we are. Okay, as you fill it and you leave the cap off, you turn the engine on and get it to at least the operating temperature. That's 80, at least 85 degrees Celsius. I'll put the Fahrenheit in, in the video description. And this is important as only above the operating temperature will the water pump really begin to move the coolant around. And it's at this point, you're also looking for visible leaks all around, you know, the hoses that you just connected. Okay, so you're going to look there. You're actually going to even look where the, uh, the coolant temperature sensor is. Okay, that's something I think I didn't really describe, but the coolant temperature sensor, you're going to take it out of your old one. You know, most likely it works. You'll know if it works, um, you know, because, you know, your, your gauge is inside. It'll tell you if it works. And all you do is kind of just twist it, and, uh, and then you can put it back into this one. It's pretty self-explanatory once, once you see it. So that's where you're going to look for any coolant leaks. You're going to look for a coolant leak over there, coolant leak there. And most importantly, the coolant, the coolant leak, if there is a leak, where this hose connects down to the bottom of the radiator. Okay, that's an important one. Remember? The level will lower as the coolant begins to fill. Any air pockets left in the nooks and crannies of the system. And you don't want any air pockets as they'll cause overheating. So you further turn the heat on in the car and that really gets the fluid running around your system. And you're going to want to squeeze these hoses. Yeah, that's what you're going to do. Squeeze the hoses. Squeeze this one as well. Now you make sure you got to also be careful because this, uh, you know, the, the car is on and these and these belts are spinning. So you need to be careful. So you're going to kind of squeeze this as well. And you notice that the coolant level will start to lower and you start to comp and you start filling it in with more. Now you've measured how much had been taken out. Remember you had your container you want to measure that so if you took out six liters or six quarts you're going to kind of make sure that you're putting in roughly around six quarts that'll give you a guide as well okay so just a precaution here you know as you're tightening these guys you don't want to super tighten them okay because you are talking about plastic components and if you make if you tighten them too much you will actually likely you could snap the component or you could maybe break into the rubber and you don't want to do that so you want to have them tight enough but not too tight. And if you notice that there's going to be a leak afterwards, you could always come by and, and give them a little bit of a tighten. And then the other thing to note is that the other piece, you know, this is the piece where we drained it. Um, you, you know, the piece that's coming out of the radiator is actually a piece of plastic. 
and your, your, your hose goes on top of it. So you certainly want to be extra careful with that one because you don't want to tighten it too much that you actually break the piece of plastic, the radiator plastic. Because if you break the radiator plastic, then you'll likely have to replace the whole radiator. So you want to avoid that. So go easy on the connector of this hose that goes to the radiator. And again, if you notice a leak afterwards, then you tighten then you tighten it a bit further. Now at this point you want to take it for a drive, a short drive, with the heat on, but you don't want to go too far in case you run into a problem. So when you return, you're gonna notice a further drop. You're gonna to want to wait until the car cools likely overnight and then open up the cap and fill it again up to up to the marker point. Then what you're gonna to want to do is hit hilly terrain. Because what you want to do is you want to, again, there may be a few air bubbles that are stuck in the system. And when you actually, when you go on some hilly terrain, you force the air bubbles out. You force it, you, it's a little, you force it more so than, than going on uh, flat terrain. The air bubbles to rise to this point, because this actually is the highest point of coolant that's in the car. After a few drives, you'll notice that the coolant level will remain constant. Further, after each of those first few drives, you want to look for any coolant leaks. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Further, I have many other Mercedes videos on my Handy Valve channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.